Building projects is the secret to breaking into data science, but many complain they don't have time for it. So in this video, I'm going to show you that you do have time for it. We are going to build an entire data science project in just 30 minutes, starting now. Okay, I have no idea what I'm even going to do. I just know I'm going to start with Kaggle, okay? Kaggle has clean data sets and ideas already for me, so I know it'll be fast. We'll go to competitions. We'll just see what's kind of going on. Hey guys, so unfortunately, my camera stopped recording around the 17 minute mark, and it was like a huge file. It was like three gigabytes, and it did not record the rest of the 12 minutes. So I'm going to walk you through step by step what I did in kind of a breakdown version. So I hope that's okay. What else is here? Let's see what else is here. Just scrolling Kaggle competitions, predict future sales. That could be interesting. Mayo Clinic, big derby, big data derby. Oh, we're doing this one. Horses, all right, we're in. Goal competition is to analyze racing horses, drafting strategies, and path efficiency. You'll develop a model never used before, coordinate data with racing data. You will help racing owners, veterinarians, better understand how equine, performance and well fit together with better data analysis equine uh, welfare could significantly improve context injury wealth of data okay so we have art heart rate ekg longitude latitude all those good things total power landing vibration a model to interpret one aspect of this new data you'll be the first to access this do 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 launch two days ago okay so it just started all right let's go ahead and look at the data looks like we have five four csvs start table a race table a tracking table and a combined of all the three okay let's click on i'm going to understand and agree okay track id race id race number program number track us index latitude longitude distance id course type track condition okay so that's all about the competitions right yeah then here's the race table so that's going to be the track id the race id the race number the distance id the course type track condition run up distance track type purse nice post time okay let's look at the start table track id race race number program number weight carried i guess that's how much the jockey weighs jockey and odds okay interesting and then here's the tracking table which is going to have the oh wait and i'm also wasn't paying attention here there's seven more columns on this one run up distance race type purse post time jockey odds okay so this one has a lot of the information of that this is the uh 10 7 7 so the complete is the combined of all three and what are we supposed to do we have like if they won or not let's turn all of these on so we have the track id the track the race the number the program the latitude the longitude the distance the track condition the run-up condition the type the purse the jockey the odds shoot we don't have any of like the actual winning data okay so let's just see what some other people have done i think we're three minutes into this so far uh we're gonna sort by most votes, just get the best one. Here's some EDA. That might be all we have time for. So let's see what they're doing. Drafting strategies, path efficiency. Okay, they read that all in. Tracking head, race number, value counts, program number. Wow, that is cool. So that's looking, what is that even looking at? Longitude and latitude. Oh, you know what would be cool, actually? Oh, this is risky, though. I don't know. Odds of winning. Odds by day event and weight carried. Jeez, I'm not sure if that was very useful or not. But I, w I was curious here. What are they using to plot this? Longitude and latitude on the tracking one. So let's go back to the data here. Uh, tracking. Does this have longitude and latitude? Oh, right here. Latitude and longitude. Race date, race number, program number. Track us ID. Is this for like a specific horse? I'm very confused. There's a track ID, AQU. This is the day, the race number, 
the program number. Okay, but then this is the track us ID, which I don't think I fully understand what that is. What? Is, what? How many? Okay, I have 25 minutes left. Ah! Gosh. Um, let's go back to the data. You guys spend a lot of time understanding this data. Let's go down here. The track us ID. Okay, I, I have a random idea, which would be interesting. I'm gonna look at Flourish, which I've used in another video. They have a really cool setting here that does like actual race um, visualizations, which could be interesting. I don't know how it does it though. So we're gonna try just quickly and just see if this makes sense. I definitely feel that time crunch coming. That's for sure. Uh, let's type in race. Oh wait, that I saw it right here. Athletics, cycling. Let's see what this looks like just for fun. That could be interesting. <laughs> That has nothing to do with latitude and longitude, though. That just has to do with, let's see, Joe and when they hit certain points. <laughs> okay, maybe that's not it. Okay, let's see. Longitude, latitude, complete. So they, wait, what is post time? Let's see. Post time odds. So you have odds off of the jockey and weight carried, race number, distance ID, course type. I don't see the heart rate data that it had mentioned earlier. Run up distance, race type right here, purse, time of the day began. Didn't it say it was gonna have, let's see. I don't know what drafting strategies is. Path efficiency. Okay, so the path efficiency could be cool. That's like the latitude and the longitude data, right? And I think that's what they really want us to focus on, it sounds like. So let's see, we have latitude and longitude here of the horse in the race passed in as an integer. Okay, and that's the latitude and longitude of a horse. So it'd be cool to just like see what that looks like for one horse. We're just gonna make it for one horse for right now and we're gonna go from there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's enter this competition. Let's see, how do I enter? I'm ready guys. All right, new notebook. Um, da, 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 da. Come on, notebook load. I have 20 minutes left. Okay, um, so let's see. I think this is just going to show me what is available to me. Just did a Kaggle notebook here. Um, okay, come on, Kaggle notebook. In the meantime, we gotta search. We have no time. We're gonna search Python animated visualization. There's not a whole lot with animation that you can do in Python. It is very uh, time intensive to do all this. But let's just see. This is going to use this function. Okay, let's see. Interest, drop, to, to, to animated. Wait, that didn't have a plot though, right? Let's see, right here. Okay. Okay, so we're in. I think we're just going to use the complete, is my guess, right? Let's see, df equals uh, pd.read csv of this data right here. Let's just make sure that's what we want it to be. Oh, I'm missing everything. Here we go. CSV, I have 20 minutes left. Oh, I missed something. What did I miss? All right, we're in. We're in df.head. To make sure, gosh, this is really slow. Let's see, I know what it does, come on. Okay, we're gonna be making sure we study this. We're gonna be doing a scatter plot. I hope that's okay. So let's see. Um, import animator, animator, 
of the fig right here the subplot get me pie oh, wait we don't want that one let's we want this one right animator is the build me a bar chart okay let's see is there an animator here in other words simply read the post df 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 i don't see any animated line plot fig X label, Y label. Build me a bar plot. All right, let's actually see. Oh, this is so slow. Oh my gosh. All right, DF head. Okay, they do have the latitude and the longitude. Is there a horse ID here? So for example, let's, let's simplify this data a lot more. We're gonna call it DF of the uh, AQU and that looks like it's on uh, New Year's okay so what we're gonna do is take our data frame filter it where data frame is equal to the track ID is equal to uh, AQU um, and let's throw an and statement in here and the race date I'm assuming that is just a string since we just uploaded it um, is equal to the uh, 2019-0101. I think if we run that, it hit an error. We need to put parentheses around this. Let's see. Okay. Done. Okay, so that's at least smaller now. Now let's make sure we show the first five rows of that. Okay, so we have the latitude, longitude, the track ID, which I still don't really get, the race number and the program number. Mm -mm -mm. Track condition, runner up, purse, post time, weight carried, odds. So this is all distance ID. Okay, so actually, let's bring this down even a little bit more. Let's just have it be in the race number of nine, for example. Race number is equal to nine, and how many rows is that? That is my question. That is 2,000 rows. Um, I don't see, it's all in the race state, that's all. Okay, there is different program numbers track us ID how many jockeys are there all right let's do that the let's do that the I know nothing about horse racing so we'll do it the race number is equal to nine and the uh, program number is equal to six just because I see that right off the bat oh I hit an error forgot to open this parenthesis okay let's see what that looks like how many rows that is. Oh boy. That did not work. So the race number, came, what? I'm almost positive I saw that in the results. Nine and the program number is equal to six. Makes me wonder if that's a string somehow. Oh my gosh, guys. We have 15 minutes. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this. Oh my gosh. What is this? Program number in the zeroth. Oh, look at that. It's like weird. So we'd have to clean that up. We're just gonna cheat six. Actually, we're just gonna copy it exactly. Um, okay, so that should tell us, we want to see how many jockeys are here. Is there multiple jockeys? I see 297 rows. Now the question is, we're going to call this DF small. Now the question is, does DF small in the jockey have multiple values dot value counts let's see let's see let's see load 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 
Nope, only one. Okay, so I guess when you have a program number, that's like that horse specific number. Okay, so if we look at DF small, that should only be one horse. And basically, I think what we're really interested in is the Trachus ID. Trachus, oh, index, I guess is what it's called. And then the latitude and the longitude. We don't have any results, which seems weird. Longitude, all right. Um, and I spelled something wrong. Awesome. Okay, um, in the meantime, we need to figure this out. Uh, I'm gonna look at one more animated uh, scatter plot Python. Let's just see if that gives me something different. It does. Suppose you have this, then you can change the settings. Just give me the whole thing. Let's see, what do I have to do to call this? See, that looks cool. Okay, we're gonna take this code right here. Does it, does it start with data too or no? How does it know animated scanner? Um, animated scatter, which is called points self. Do, do, do. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, it does have random. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull this whole code in right here and see how well it works. Okay, so I misspelled something. It must be, the, oh, it's track with no C. Gotcha. Okay, so that's, I think, the data we really want to pass in. Got to copy that in. We have 13 minutes, guys. I'm feeling a little bit nervous. Okay, paste that in. I don't see that moving at all. Do y'all? All right. Sometimes Kaggle can be a little bit weird. I guess we probably didn't call it, huh? Let's let's actually see. What if we just call it like this? I can't tell if that's moving or not. We're going to see if it's a machine problem or what. Okay, okay. I'm busy. Hit run. I do not see it moving. That looked so promising. So unfortunately, that is where the camera stopped recording. I think the file size just got too big and I was too in the zone to notice that the camera wasn't recording. But I'll go ahead and quickly summarize what I did with the rest of the project and if I was able to complete it in the 30 minutes or not. I was having a hard time with the animation inside of Kaggle. I just, it was too many unknowns to know where I was gonna be saved and if the file size was gonna be too big for Kaggle. And if Kaggle could even handle this, just because it's on the cloud and you have limited resources. So I said, you know what, I'm not gonna worry about Kaggle and I just turned everything back into a spider script so that I could just work locally on my machine. I did end up utilizing this script that I found on Stack Overflow after looking at matplotlib animated scatter. I used this basically this exact same thing, but instead of doing random points, I ended up using the ones from my data frame, of course. And instead of saving it as an MP4, I saved it as a GIF. It just seemed a little bit easier and less memory. My goal was to be able to see one horse go around the track. So basically create an animated data viz that showed a horse going around the track. And you can see, I didn't quite get it. I came close. I was trying to get that horse to move and you can see it's moving, but it's like moving backwards sometimes. And so as time expired, I only had this, which was not very impressive if you ask me. But about one minute after the time expired, I figured it out. I realized I was making a mistake in my code, specifically in the for loop. And I needed to reset the mask data frames index and once I did that, I was able to get the horse to go around the whole entire square, which was really exciting and really fun. So we didn't do it in 30 minutes, we did it in 32 minutes, but that's still pretty close. And then I went about 15 minutes over time to actually make it so you could see all of the horses moving along, which was really exciting because then it was like a race. You were watching these dots, which are basically horses, race across the horse track. And that was almost like being there in real life. Not really, but it was pretty fun. The one problem was it was hard to see who was in the lead because I, I didn't really 
focus on the colors. And so what I did is I added basically something right here that would basically track what number was where. And so we saw that number three won this particular race. So congrats to number three. And I felt like this was a good place to end the project. So we ended up at 45 minutes, which is not 30 minutes, but it's also not an hour. It did not take us days to do this. It only took us about 45 minutes from complete scratch to do this project. And yes, I realize that this project isn't a million percent complete. You could do a million different things with it, but sometimes you just need to say, hey, at least I did something and post it to your portfolio and have a cool story and say, I did this in 45 minutes. I was really proud of myself. But here are ways that you could actually make this better. You could be able to put this into a Streamlit app that basically let them choose the track, the date, the race number, and then you know visualize the race. I think that would be pretty cool. So it's not just this specific race, which is like the Australian track track and race nine or something like that. Let the users choose what they want to see, right? Also, you can make those colors less psychedelic, actually make them correspond to a horse. Maybe use different horse pictures. That could be fun, like little horse emojis or something like that. Yeah, make the visualization just like a little bit cleaner at the title, clean up the axes. I didn't have time to do that, but you can make that look a lot more neat. There's definitely ways that you can take this project and make it something that really looks good on your portfolio. And you can do that right now because I'm going to give you the code and I'm going to give you the data. So down below in the description, there is a link that you can click that says resources, and that'll take you to the place where you can download the code and the data for this particular project. So go ahead, steal my code. I'm giving it to you. It's not stealing. I'm giving it to you right now. Use that as a starter. If you end up using it, you can feel free to attri attribute me. That's a hard word for me to say, attribute me, and just say that you start with it. But you can do so many cooler things than I have done with this code, and you can enter into that cackle contest as well. There is like a pot of like 25 grand or something like that that you could possibly win by doing a project like that. By the way, if you didn't know, my name is Avery Smith. I'm doing 30 data science projects in 30 days. You can check out these projects right here if you like this project, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.